I am here on behalf of Megan to introduce with great pleasure Miss Catherine, um, who was one of our three seniors in the professional practices course this semester and whose work she'll be speaking about shortly. Um, but again, thank you all for coming. Um, about halfway through, we're going to take a wild ride, so I want you to pretend that you're actually on a roller coaster because we're going to have to move the tech cart from one view to another. So don't be alarmed, but that's what we're going to do, okay? Um, and then we'll, after Catherine speaks, she's going to go ahead and give um, field questions. And um, Tommy T, if you're going to give a hard question, you have to like go easy on your daughter here for <laughs> once, all right? <laughs> so without much further ado, Catherine. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm really nervous, so I'm excited to share this with you. Um, all right, let's get started. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been interested in abstract art. Um, I was fascinated with the work of Jackson Pollock and going to the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, living in New Jersey, so close to go. Um, I always was fascinated with his work based on scale and the way he threw down paint and the way he stomped on canvases and he really had a unique process, which I was fascinated by as a little young artist. Um, after many years of being told what to do in training yeah. with art, um, this block of work gave me an opportunity to explore any topic or process I wanted, which was very daunting at first, but I was really excited. Um, I had to look inward and question what I really wanted to do for the series and what I actually really enjoyed in art. I've always worked representationally, um, painting and drawing realistic things, but being fascinated with abstract art, I decided to just go for it. Jackson, Jackson Pollock's work gave me a foundation, but when I took a first look at the work of Mark Bradford in my drawing class, everything clicked. Mark Bradford is an artist who creates huge, dynamic, and textured works using only paper, layering them up, and taking them right down. These works are ginormous, and he's a tall guy, like seven feet tall, so he looked small compared to them. Um, and I was completely fascinated by his process. So learning about this process of physically creating the work solidified what I wanted to experiment with this semester. I found meaning behind this type of process when I thought about how all the, these different services and textures reminded me of my own experiences with ADHD. As a person with ADHD, I often get overwhelmed by sights, sounds, and my own intrusive thoughts. Many times I abandon tasks as I fail to multitask and I'm unable to concentrate on any one thing. As I often deal with sensory overload, knee tapping, distractions, and unfinished tasks, creating artwork is one of the very few things that keeps me engaged. In this series, titled The Hyperactive Mind, I explore my relationship with ADHD through abstract artworks that visually convey what it's like to have it. Although each person who has ADHD experiences different things, each of these works address my experiences with sensory overload, hyperfocusing, distraction, anxiety, and overwhelming feelings. I focus on exploring texture and surface by combining media to create dynamic surfaces with shifting focal points in order to embody the distracted mind. This block of work has had an emphasis on process and the collection of materials such as tissue paper, glitter, fabric, notes, and more to visually embody my experiences and the complexity of my emotions. Using these materials and applying them in a strategic way allows for an opportunity for neurotypical viewers' insight into the mind of a non-neurotypical person and to find commonalities between us. Two pieces I want to highlight are the works Unfinished Tasks and Process. The work behind me, this is Unfinished Tasks, and this is the largest piece I've ever created, which is really exciting for me. Um, and I really got to experiment with process and step out of my comfort zone. As I mentioned before, I typically have worked representationally as an artist, um, but it never truly felt quite right for me. I fell in love with the physical process of creating this piece, painting and gluing things that don't quite go together, and even leaving the work unfinished. It opened the door for the kind of art I wanted to pursue. I actually had the intention of finishing this piece entirely when I first started it, but I kind of stood back and noticed mid-process that I, it, it was more impactful, leaving it unfinished than finished. As a small girl working on a big surface, this is really exciting for me. I'm only 5'2", this thing's like 
four feet by six feet or something like that. So that was really cool for me. I had a lot of ground to cover. Um, my other work, Process, is a small installation piece that highlights my endless thoughts and development behind the series. All right, hold on. And we're going to turn the cameras right. to show. So this is a small installation piece um, that highlights my endless thoughts and development behind the series. I felt that my notes, drawings, lists, and more were important to include because it, the, ADHD is the ADHD brain is constantly working and moving. This, series also, this work also reveals the reality of the process of creating artwork and the conceptual thinking behind it. This type of thinking was cultivated through my time at Loyola and has propelled me in the direction of non-representational art. I want to truly thank you all for attending and supporting me. Thank you to my professors, Mary Beth Aker, Chris Lonigan, Julie Sayo, Dan Schlappbach, and Billy Friebel for always supporting me. Your aff positive affirmations kept me going. Thank you to Megan Rapepsel for letting us showcase our work in the gallery and for aiding us in the process. I appreciate you all and your endless support, and I'm looking forward to what I share with you next. So, if anybody would like to ask questions of Catherine, now is an excellent time to do so. I have a question. Am I allowed to ask a question? Yeah. That is welcomed and encouraged. Yay, well, hi, Kat. I miss hi. you. I miss you so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, how long did it take you to finish the four by six one? Um, I had it hanging on the walls of my studio for like probably three months. So it was just sitting there and I, I really focused on it for about like maybe like a week or two. And then I just kept it up and then I, every time I go into the studio, I add something to it or rip things off. And it, this whole process took kind of a long time because it takes a lot of time for glue to dry and hot glue and everything. Um, and when things were solidified, I would just rip them off, which was interesting too. So um, I guess it was just a work in progress throughout the whole semester, but I really kick-started it probably like in a week. I got like a majority done, and then that's when I decided to leave it unfinished. But yeah. So Catherine, why did you decide to leave it unfinished? Um, well, as I was painting it, I, I mixed up this really cool purple color underneath and I was going from one end to the other and I realized that I, like, I stood back and I was like, oh, this is kind of an interesting design choice. And then I realized, I was like, you know what, like, this actually speaks in, in itself because I have so many unfinished tasks and even unfinished artwork that I haven't hung and I haven't finished fully, I haven't even signed, like there's just so many little things. And I was like, the amount of unfinished tasks I have is really kind of part of my experiences and that it, it's appropriate to leave this unfinished. It says something, it's a statement. And um, yeah, so then on, on, when I finished putting the paint down, I started layering things. All these different materials, paper towels, tissue paper, glitter, uh, metallic like sheets of paper, architectural paper, like all these different things. And then I started taking them off and peeling them away. Um, and it was hard to, to decide when it was finished, but I think I got to a point where I didn't want to add or change anything else. So. <laughs> Anybody else with questions? Yeah, I have a question, actually. Um, Kat, great job on all the pieces, by the way. Thank you. Um, I really like the theme behind all of it, and I'm wondering if uh, the theme has, like, you know, this is kind of a work in progress. Uh, some of it is left unfinished purposefully. Um, was the theme behind it something that you thought of for a while, or was it something that just came to you and uh, you, you went with it? It definitely, it definitely came to me. Like, I, I just kind of stood back. Like, I had all these plans and intentions, and even, like, on my installation piece, I have, like, sketches and different notes of trying to figure out what I wanted to, to make and design. And... I had the intention of completely filling that entire space, and then I just kind of stood back and I was like, huh, I don't know, things started to take a turn, and I was like, this looks cool as it is, and um, that's just one thing also that was different for me, because I'm normally such a planner when it comes to art. I design things out, I design colors, and everything, I, I really am meticulous about how I want things to be, and this, throughout this whole process, it was definitely kind of on the fly. Like I, I saw things, I'm like, oh, this looks, this is not the way I intended, but this, this looks cool, like this could work. And um, 
I definitely was uh, experimental, which is what I really enjoyed about it because art doesn't have to be so stressful and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a specific way. There's so many, there's so many different ways to make art. So, and I definitely fell in love with this process more than like anything. So you Absolutely, used, great, great job, Pat. Thank you. So you used your intuition mm -hmm. on this series. Did it make you uncomfortable at any time? Were you completely frustrated or like, how did, did it flow so easily or how did that go for you? Um, sometimes it was very frustrating because um, I had a hard time um, thinking of general concepts for the pieces and, and general designs. Um, there's a piece, I don't, you guys can see it's out of the frame, but it's called Hyperfocus. Um, yeah, maybe she could turn the camera. Um, this one I had a lot of trouble designing. Um, and these, um, these experiences and sensations, um, it's, it's hard to translate them into visual form because feelings are, are just hard to, to show visually. Like you can use the color blue when you're sad, but there, it doesn't quite capture the feeling. Um, so this one I definitely had some trouble designing and I just kept all these canvases up in my studio, nailed to the wall. Just kept looking at them over and over and over again every week throughout the semester and I had to make decisions. It came to a point where I, especially for this piece, I, I had to make some concrete decisions and I'm happy with the way it turned out. That, that center piece um, in the middle of that circle is metallic so when you walk by it kind of changes which I, I like the way that came out. Um, but yeah, it definitely, it was an interesting process because it was free flowing but at the same time it's like well, if I put things down, I'd have to take them off, and I have to paint over things, and I have to... It definitely is a transformative process. Thank you. It, Catherine, I have a question for you. Yeah. I uh, wonder about that you talked about sort of that this is sort of a free-form process. You get started, and it just sort of un, uh, evolves and unfolds as, as you go. I wonder sort of that, that you have to make initially a, a, a decision about size. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the piece we were just talking about is, is larger than the ones over your left shoulder. So I wonder how does that sort of, where do you begin with that decision about sort of the size to make it? And then is there a different relationship that you have or the process? Is it different working on that more larger piece compared to the ones over your left shoulder, which are much smaller? Is that, is that a different experience? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, initially, I wanted to do all large scale um, works, like like um, unfinished tasks over there. Um, and because I, I was inspired by Mark Bradford and Jackson Pollock and just that, that huge scale, I just loved it. And then I experimented initially with a, a smaller piece and just like doing smaller works just to see how tissue paper, the transparency of it and the layering and everything. And then I realized I was like, well, this looks cool at a smaller scale too. You can get much more intricate and detailed in this way too. Not everything has to be like huge. And it kind of creates a different experience when things are, are on a smaller scale versus just large. Um, so I think that opened the door to me, like my experimentations on a smaller scale opened the door um, to me creating smaller works. But I think in the future, I do want to stick to larger pieces because I just, I just love the scale, and just as a small person, I'm just like, oh, this thing's huge compared to me. So, <laughs> as long as I have the space, the wall space, to hang things up. <laughs> this was actually right here, it was the first piece I ever experimented with, and I actually created this in Mary Beth's drawing color class. Um, we were experimenting with surface and texture, and it really um, was, the beginning for me like I, I just love the composition and it's hard to tell on like the screen now but um, when the virtual gallery opens you guys will be able to see it. Evan, it it's interesting to hear you say that, that, that you, you kind of prefer the larger pieces or, or you, you want to work large going forward. Um, I definitely felt like in the gallery those pieces kind of embodied, like physically embodied your ideas in a way that was visceral and kind of connects to your ideas, your interest in Pollock and Bradford. Um, so I wanted to ask you about professional practices gives you that opportunity to create a body of work and then create it and create a sequence on the wall, which is not something you likely have done in other classes, or at least not to that extent. So I'm, 
I um, wanted to hear more of your thought process on the sequence because um, there is like the process piece that you end on, which is is sort of large scale, but it's also it feels very linear. Like it takes you straight down to the floor, whereas some of these other pieces open up and um, kind of like like you said, they're they're your dimension, right? Um, and so I'm just curious about how you're using the body, the, the viewer's body, as they move through these different artworks to communicate your message. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Um, that, yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, I initially, I think this whole thing was experimentation. And I think I had to, at one point, like, not, I didn't have to work small scale, but I was like, this is, since I'm experimenting with these large surfaces, let me see what it's like, even creating these small tiles and sewing them together. Um, and I think, I think these, I think scale even communicates something um, in itself too, because for example, this piece is called Diary, and it kind of shows like each day how, like I experience different things and how, um, like sensations are, are just different. And sometimes like I have, I have better days than other days. Sometimes I really can't focus on the stress of school and all this stuff. Um, so I think maybe like the smaller pieces capture like a specific um, like moment in relation to the overall like larger bodies of work. Um, yeah, and I, I think, I just, go ahead. Just to follow up, I was just wondering like why the process piece was sort of in the end of it. Or, or it feels like it's in the end of it, like you come in and move across and that, and how one piece feeds into the next piece, like the large piece sets up the small piece. Yeah, I think, well the process piece being at the end, I wanted to end with that because I wanted the viewer to take in everything else and to maybe kind of wonder why, um, like, w like what is, what is the purpose of all this? Like, because I, I, I think people sometimes are quick to judge like, oh, that's just paper on a canvas. Like that's just, I can do that. And that's something that I wanted the viewer maybe to question and think about like when looking at all these pieces first and at the end realize that there's this entire list and notes and everything I've been making and, and taking and putting together into this format so they can see the conceptual um, thinking behind it. And that was definitely cultivated through um, my classes at Loyola, definitely just, just the deeper meaning behind um, like what's below the surface. And I think the transition between like the larger pieces and smaller pieces was mostly based on aesthetics, I feel like, um, coming to the gallery and seeing how I want to organize things. I did these all, these aren't in order or anything. I think um, I just wanted like, I guess more balance when they're being presented. I have a question if I may. Yes. Kat, you know, we've had a lot of conversations and my interest in the relation between art and neuroscience invites this question of you. Since in your, your, your talk today, you emphasized uh, material and conceptual processes. They, at least in my mind, relate directly to neurological processes. Has being, a, and I love this expression, uh, non-neurotypical proved an advantage in any way? Um, I think it has. I mean, I people with ADHD tend to be creative. They, th there's, I mean, it's different for everybody. There's different types of it. Um, but I, I think that it has benefited me in a way, it, especially like, even though things like hyper focusing, you're taken away from the world. You have all these things going on, but you're zeroed in on one thing. That, that makes me produce art. Like that zeroes me in and the time goes by, hours goes by, and I'm zeroed in on this task and I create art. And having ADHD, I wonder if that has kind of led me to become like an artist in a way. Like it, it has helped me um, as an artist. But I think there definitely are, are benefits to it, but it definitely is challenging too. Um, in the daily life, but it's also about like accepting myself and who I am and just using it as a tool um, cre creatively and also um, I guess in other ways too. Did you want to go ahead? 
Uh, I was gonna ask about the process, but I feel like you already answered that. Like I was gonna say, I thought you were kind of trying to cut your ADHD into like making the process one and including it in your exhibit to show like the struggles that you can go through and like ideas and like stuff like that. Cause I thought I saw one sort of crossed out and I thought that like kind of symbolized all that, but maybe it's wrong. Yeah, I think. I mean, I've been taking these notes all semester long and gathering these materials and um, putting them together. And that's one thing too, that's I guess relates back to the last question, is that my mind is constantly going and thinking and going and thinking, which is beneficial and also a downfall. It's a beneficial because it helps me unpack things creatively and think of more ideas and um, create a list of, of ideas and, and things I could work through. and. I have so many, so many ideas all the time, which is kind of why this list kind of goes and folds and it's kind of endless, um, which I wanted that to, I wanted that kind of folding of it at the bottom, which makes it an installation piece um, to be kind of endless. So yeah. And I also, it made me incredibly vulnerable to put that up too because it really gives insight into like my mind and how I feel and and just errands I have to run and all these materials I was gathering and it, it's definitely a unique piece and I also wanted to kind of reject um, the concept of artists just putting out their work and no context is given behind it. You don't know what the artist is thinking, they put out this work and they're like, here you go viewer, take it. And I kind of wanted to reject that and be like, okay, here here's the process of the artist and here's what they think about before creating work or in this process. Would I be able to ask a question? Yeah. So Catherine, I've known you as an artist for a long time. I know that you're typically really meticulous about your work and you said a lot of these pieces kind of revealed themselves to you in a way. So you kind of had to learn to relinquish some of that control. Which one would you say was the most difficult for you to produce? Um, I would say, going back to this one, hyper-focus, um, because I just struggled with the concept for so, so, so long, and just, I, I had a completely different vision for this, um, and I, I experimented with different things, and I painted over it <laughs> multiple times, um, and I just, Kind of struggle with the concept and it, it was just sitting on the wall there for so long and I come in and like oh I'll start that one I, I don't know I'll, I'll think about it and I'm not the type of person to start something and not be completely sure about the concept um, so it was just sitting there and waiting for me to start it and then once I kind of came up with something I, I liked I kind of went for it but it did I did get painted over a couple times and it did I don't know it, it was just difficult to illustrate and um, I definitely had help along the way um, to kind of go through re revisions and different ideas to properly illustrate it. It's beautiful. They're all beautiful pieces. Thank you. <laughs> Audrey is my um, partner artist in crime. Aww. My artist partner in crime. Good to have one of those. Can I ask a question, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Which one are you most proud of? Um, I think I, I'm most proud of this one. I, I love the scale. I love the risks that I took. Um, I, I just, I think this is something that I've always wanted to create. I think I've found, found my kind of niche um, in the art world. It, it's so hard when you're taking all these different classes, learning all these different things. And I went through a period of time where it's like, oh, I love doing portraits, I love doing landscapes, I love doing collage, I love doing all these different things. And I'm like, okay, now I have this whole, all these sets of skills. How, like, what do I pick? What do I want to do? And this allowed me time to experiment. So I, this one was really the first one I was most excited to start. And I just love the way it turned out. I got positive feedback on this one. And I just, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just think this one's my favorite. I just, I definitely took a risk not completing it. Um, I wonder how professional people would perceive it. Like I'm thinking about if it was actually in a real, like a, a big gallery, like how it would be perceived. But um, yeah, I, I think this was one.
smells like you're right. <laughs> but it, it, it may be finished because it's meant to be unfinished. Yeah. That's your meaning or content. Yeah. Right? And so content and the execution work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Anyone else with a question? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to end the Zoom room here in just a minute or two, but thank you so much. And Catherine, thank you. Big hand. <laughs>